Welcome to the final installment of my Fleetline series. Unfortunately, I was unable to get a bunch of video that I wanted to get because I sold the car before I had a chance to film it all. But I'm going to start out with a video that started it all off here, and it's an example of how loose the front end was before I did the rebuild on it. Now, that had a major impact on how the car drove and what I was saying in the very first video, how loose it was after 10 years of driving. Now, the steering box itself also needed to be rebuilt, and like I said, I couldn't find any parts to be able to rebuild it, and I wanted it to drive like a modern car, so we used the steering rack out of a 1990 Chevrolet Cavalier. This is a power steering rack, and you can see that I have it set up on my bench here, and, and set up for initial mock-up. The next picture that you can see here is... A little bit of a notch that I had to do in the frame and if you see the next picture the power steering hoses that I needed the 90 degrees that came off the rack to go up to the power steering box um, needed a little bit of clearance so the only way that I could achieve that is I took a little bit of a piece of pipe and TIG welded it in the firewall mount that I built this this is an initial mock-up that I did and you can see that I left the steering shaft long. The reason why I left this long is that I wanted to have a place where I could transpose some measurements onto for the universal joints that I was putting into the steering system. I was able to repurpose one of the holes where the original steering box went. I used a piece of angle iron and I welded a uh, hind joint tube adapter uh, cut at an angle to the top of the angle iron when I uh, after I bolted it to the frame. I tacked it there and set it up where exactly I wanted my uh, steering shaft to go through. And I essentially just put the, all the steering shaft together and locked it down on the top. In this next shot, you can see the angles that I had to uh, achieve with my universal joints. Now the bottom into the actual steering rack was a double universal joint. That's why we had to put the uh, support bearing on the bottom by the heim joint. Then at the top was just a regular universal joint bearing. Now you can see the piece of pipe that I was talking about in my second video that I'd cut and I seated the bearing in and used the shaft stop to hold the bearing in. I ended up tacking this in in a couple of spots to try and keep it a little bit safer. But with the bushing at the top of the steering wheel and then the bearing at the bottom, it was more than enough, but I just wanted a little bit of reassurance that it was going to be okay. This next picture is getting the actual uh, restoration of the suspension. Now I bought a complete original suspension rebuild kit. I was able to repurpose the original lower A-arms. I didn't have any more fixing up to do other than putting in the bump stops. But the upper A-arms, I ended up buying brand new ones from Eckler's Chevy. And uh, I also bought from Chevs of the 40s a uh, disc brake conversion. And I can say putting this disc brake conversion in and I put in a dual master cylinder kit from Chevs of the 40s. This thing stopped like it never stopped before. Like this definitely felt and drove like a modern car after this conversion was done. I've got a shot here of everything installed, ready for mock-up. And, uh, you know, I, I had very minimal fitting that I had to do. There was just a little bit of a, a kerf that needed to be uh, addressed with a file. And really, it wasn't that much. It was more about the thickness of the paint that I needed to uh, get rid of. And here's a shot, a little bit of a fancy one with the work laid underneath, trying to highlight what's going on underneath the car. And... This little video, I just wanted to show, unfortunately I didn't get a picture of the uh, engine running with the power steering pump installed, but I was able to get it idling a little bit, and you can hear that it didn't really change anything while it was idling. There's no weird whirring sounds, there's no weird stuff going on there. And, you know, once I got it set on the ground, this thing, the steering on it was very light, yet it had a road feel on it. And that's all because of that reduced pressure um, power steering pump that I installed. And, you know, I really see what people mean, that if you put in a full uh, pressure uh, Saginaw pump, 
how the steering can be really sketchy because it really is too much pressure against jerky. This was not jerky at all. It felt really nice. Uh, coming up to speed, I got the I got it up to about 40 miles an hour, and it really felt no different than my 2015 Ford Escape. It was absolutely solid after this. A little bit of a shot of the underneath with the exhaust installed. I accidentally touched the one pipe with my greasy hand, and it left a black smear on there. But you can see how nice and tight and compact everything is under there. And really, it ended up looking like a factory install. There's the steering rack box with the uh, part number on it if you want to find it out for yourself. Um, you can just buy it at any auto parts store. It's, I think this is a bit of an off-brand uh, rebuild kit. Now, when I put the... Uh, master cylinder in the floor the dual master cylinder was a little bit uh, taller than the original so I ended up having to cut the floor out where the original had gone through so I wasn't sure what I was going to do to make clearance uh, so I kind of thought about it what I ended up doing was uh, taking a piece of flat sheet metal and kind of mocking it up in the car a little bit from underneath and I drew a circle around where the master cylinder was now the next thing that I did was I opened up the jaws on my vise and I took my air hammer and I ran it along. You can see the uh, oval shape that I made. And after I had a nice groove in there, I took the uh, teardrop hammer and the sandbag and I beat on it. And then I hammered and dollied it out flat. So then once I had that going on, I uh, did the same thing with the, uh, the vise. And I did the reverse beads and ran that in there so that it matched up with the factory floor. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It uh, I'd never really tried anything like that before, and it, it really did work out great. You can see with me test fitting it there how well it actually ended up fitting in the car. And I basically just left it like that. And I'm going to leave you with a little bit of a shot I did, a little bit of an artistic impression of the car. I really enjoyed making these videos. I'm going to try and make some more videos in the future. I hope you enjoyed them as well. And uh, the next series is going to be on my 38 Pontiac. And it's going to be a little bit uh, something different. I'm going to do a bit of a pro touring car where everything's tucked underneath. And still have a little bit of that early 40s or flair to it. You know, kind of a Westergaard style. But this thing's going to handle and the engine's going to be tucked under the hood. She's going to have a... Oh, yeah... Another LS swap. Everybody is probably sick of hearing about LS swaps, but this one's going to be a little bit different. We're going to do a 72 millimeter turbo. So I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.